Are you thinking about moving to Spokane, Washington? Well, before you pack your bags, there are some things that you need to know. Spokane might be a great place to live, but like any city, it has its downsides. Today, we're diving into the top seven worst things about living in Spokane that you should know about. So trust me, you'll wanna stay till the very end. Hey there, I'm Hayden Halstead, your Spokane real estate resource. And if you find this video helpful or valuable at all, all I ask is that you subscribe and hit the like button so more people just like you can get this information and decide if Spokane is the right place for them. So first on the list is the growing issue that's hard to ignore homelessness. Over the past few years, Spokane has seen a noticeable increase in homelessness. If you've driven through downtown or certain neighborhoods, you've likely seen the impact firsthand. Tent encampments, makeshift shelters, and overall rise in visible poverty throughout the downtown area. I know our city is trying to address the issue. It's been a hot button topic at the Spokane City Council since they came back from their summer vacation, and they actually are postponing some major decisions and are setting up some work groups that you can apply to be on and that will be meeting at the Central Library to get more public input on the homelessness issue. Currently the hot button topic is at city council is making homelessness a protected class. And I'm not gonna get into that too much on this video as we're still in early conversations about it at the city council, but it is on the docket right now. But overall, the strain on public resources is evident. Um, one of our major facilities out on Trent that would house about 300 people is now shutting down, but they're also working on put, making smaller resource centers throughout the city, which I think could actually be a decent idea rather than putting all people that need resources in one space and making a very uh, making that specific spot kind of rough their goal is to break it out amongst the city and put maybe 20 people here or 30 people there and each neighborhood would kind of have a resource center of course there's going to be huge pushback on that as many neighbors aren't going to want that in their area but from the feedback of these people that actually take advantage of the resource centers being in a place where you can actually build some community and have some friends some people you recognize every day versus just being a number in a place that is housing hundreds of people might actually help these people get back on their feet i did just meet with a couple that's looking to move here from new Mexico and they said that uh, our homeless crisis here is nothing compared to what they are used to. They felt so much more safe than they do in their where they live down in uh, New Mexico and so uh, I can't I have nothing to compare it to and I know that it's like a classic Spokane thing to say that it's always worse somewhere else and we shouldn't that's never an excuse for anything in life but as somebody born and raised in Spokane and uh, many of you born and raised in Spokane we've seen it just get worse and worse but people are still moving here as like a safe haven because they still think that it is better than where they are currently at. All right, topic number two is crime. While Spokane is generally a safe city, certain areas have seen an uptick, especially property crime. I mean, I know that my the Audubon Downriver Facebook group has been blowing up recently because somebody's driving around with an airsoft gun shooting out car windows. Um, but Spokane generally has a higher rate of property crime than the national average, kind of way above the national average. So this includes things like vehicle break-ins, vandalism, and theft. So it's important to know which neighborhoods are maybe more prone to these issues. And one resource that you can use for this is typing in the Spokane County crime map. There's an updated crime map that will show you where the hotspots are for a crime. You can see what crimes happened if they're happening in specific areas. And it can just be a good resource while you're looking to figure out which neighborhood might be a good choice for you. But there is some good news in this topic. Spokane's citywide crime report recently came out and it actually showed that property crime is down 16% so far this year and violent crime is down 6%. So this is good news overall that we're actually seeing a decrease from a spike um, of additional crimes that happened during the pandemic. There's been a weird increase in arsons year to date. There's been about 75 arson reports. Uh, last year, uh, year to date, there would have been 57. Um, but there's also been like a few people that have lit like multiple, like arsonists that were like serial arsonists and they were just like lighting random stuff on fire. I think most of them have been caught at this point. Um, but I mean, I remember seeing being in Kendall Yards and looking over and seeing like this whole thing of shrubs on fire um, in the middle of the day and like they just they put it out. So um, so that's a weird thing. But overall, the perception I say of locals is that they feel like crime is going up, but statistically looking at the police reports, it is actually down. And so although as a realtor, I can't say what neighborhoods are good or bad or say you should live in this one and you shouldn't live in that one, you can reach out to me and we can discuss in detail further, look over some of this data that I have pulled. I can help you get access to all the resources available for you to make a decision on which neighborhood is best for you. So just use the first link down below to schedule a meeting with me on my calendar at a time that's convenient for you. All right, a third serious issue 
issue that kind of coincides with the last couple is our drug problem here in Spokane. Like many cities across the country, Spokane has been hit hard by an opioid epidemic and other substance abuse issues. Methamphetamines and opioids are particularly prevalent, leading to a range of problems from increased crime to public health concerns. So this isn't just a problem that's affecting individuals using the substances. It actually, I mean, it's affecting our whole community. And I would just say the morale of the community more than anything, uh, just people seeing discarded needles, people you drive down division and it's not uncommon to see somebody smoking something from a piece of tinfoil, uh, things like that. I would just say that in the recent years, it's become more visually prevalent than it ever has before. And it is reported that these that there are more cases of it. There's a report by crim.com that shows that in 2022, first responders were uh, responding to an average of three overdose calls a day. By 2023, it was averaging four a day. And within the first 38 days of 2024, because this article was written back in February, uh, the Spokane Fire Department had responded to over 249 calls, averaging six per day. Back in 2022, 215 people had passed away due to drug overdoses, and 73% of them were attributed to opioids. So obviously a major issue here in the Spokane area, um, but it is, an, a pan, it is an epidemic across the country. And so it's just uh, unfortunate that we're having to deal with it. It just coincides with the last two topics as well. One of the maybe less obvious but equally challenging issues is the smoke from all the wildfires. Every summer, Spokane and the surrounding areas are at risk of wildfires, and when they happen, the smoke can make the air quality downright hazardous. If you have a respiratory issue, allergies, or just don't like the smell of smoke, this is something to definitely consider. This past summer wasn't too bad. We just had, we had a few smoky days, but nothing that was like, you can't go outside. But in summers past, there has definitely been weeks where it's like, you don't go outside. Like it, the, it is very hazardous. I've lived in Missoula, Montana. It was similar there. I know that this year, Boise, Idaho was hit much harder than we were because many of the fires were happening in Eastern Oregon and were more at a parallel with uh, Boise and they weren't traveling north. The smoke wasn't traveling north as much uh, up here. The wildfire season typically hits in late summer. This year, we were actually a little bit earlier. I felt like most of the smoke was in July and August has been pretty good. Fingers crossed nothing major happens here and heading into September, but at least things are gonna be cooling off here uh, pretty soon. But I felt like we hit our dry spot pretty early this year and then we actually had more precipitation in August. Uh, it's just a feeling I hadn't looked, I haven't looked that up uh, factually, but I feel like we had more rain in August than we did in July and more major fires in July. There were definitely some close calls. There was a fire that was pretty close to home. It was just off of Government Way in West Spokane. It was about 44 acres and was working its way down into a cemetery and was just across the road from a housing community. So uh, that one was pretty nerve wracking. There was, I mean, it was slightly entertaining because it was just I was on my back, back porch back here just watching dozens of uh, planes flying over all night but luckily it was close to the river they were able to stop in grab water and be like consistently looping so anyway so that was very close to home but it's definitely something to think about we've had medical lake being extremely damaged from a pre, uh, the fire last year many properties up in elk were lost as well so if you are looking for a more rural property around trees or something like that it's just something to keep in mind all right next let's touch base on the housing market Spokane real estate market has been hot for a while now and with more people moving here the demand for housing has skyrocketed it's leveled out over the last year and a half or so um, but unfortunately the city hasn't kept pace with housing developments we as a community are around 30,000 houses short from where we should be in the new construction world and really what we're doing now is just throwing up houses wherever we can find some land but I just don't think we're doing it in a very thoughtful way a lot of the time I have some clients that just sold their home here in Spokane are moving down to Austin Texas and the community Community, community that they're moving into is like a full-blown community. Like there's uh, parks and uh, public pools being built in and uh, a, like a gym, like a community gym, like their HOA obviously is included in that. Here in Spokane, like the only option for that would be into a Greenstone community in Trutina when you have to be 55 plus to do that. Um, we just don't have a lot of options for neighborhoods that have that kind of amenity to them. I mean, we have a handful of neighborhoods that have parks built in. Obviously, Greenstone is one of those builders that is great at doing that. And there are some neighborhoods, like I have some clients that bought a home just off of Chapman Road. The neighborhoods up there built by Camden Homes have some small little parks in them. I just think most of the time we're building up houses just on parcels of land. No amenities are being added, just houses are being added. Um, and so just it was just crazy for me to hear 
uh, how much value they were getting for their house, like uh, not just the house itself, but the rest of the community uh, being built around them. So if you're looking for a neighborhood that's a little bit more established, it has more amenities, you're often looking for a older home that's gonna cost the same or more than a new home. Uh, so if you are somebody that is like really looking for like a brand new home with great amenities like some of these other areas, maybe like Texas or something like that, then uh, Spokane might not just might not be the spot for you. So we have just very much older homes, and uh, I wouldn't I would just say that there's very few pockets that have this. The only other one that comes to mind is Eagle Ridge. That's like my my number one neighborhood for these like very well planned out neighborhoods. There's multiple parks, there's splash pads, there's five miles of walking trails uh, integrated within the community. So that's like the uh, picturesque neighborhood in terms of like building a community not just building uh, a bunch of houses on a parcel of land. So if you're finding that navigating the housing market here in Spokane is a little tricky, uh, you want some more guidance, I'm just a call or message away. Feel free to reach out anytime. So next up, we're addressing the political environment in Spokane. Our city is pretty evenly divided between conservative and liberal residents, and really the divide being more uh, less in the city of Spokane itself, but in the city of Spokane versus kind of the rest of the county. Um, so it can make for an interesting po political atmosphere, which can just make for an interesting uh, an atmosphere and interesting city council meetings. Unlike more politically homogenous areas like Seattle, which leans more liberal, or North Idaho, which might lean more conservative, Spokane's 50-50 split means you'll encounter a wide range of opinions and sometimes heated debates. So one resource I have for you is that there is a voting map right here here and you can type in Spokane, Washington, you can see how people voted in the last election. So if that is something that is important to you, it's a good resource um, as you're narrowing down which neighborhood you're looking for. But I was on Reddit recently. I like going on the Spokane Reddit because I feel like it's the most honest opinions of Spokane that you can find. And a lot of people are saying it's like out of a thousand people, everybody really doesn't care what everybody else is thinking or anything like that. And then you just might have that one person driving down the road, whether whatever side of the aisle you're on, they might be advertising something that's very conservative, something very liberal, but it makes people uncomfortable. And just because that one person kind of made everybody uncomfortable, it makes everybody feel like there's a lack of morale and community in our community. And even though it's just one person out of the thousand. So if you see one person going out there and being obnoxious with their opinions, it doesn't mean that everybody feels that way. All right, so lastly is the lack of things to do if you're not an outdoorsy person. On the, that same Reddit or thread I was reading just like how many, I was like looking up things to do in Spokane. And of course, Spokane is an outdoor lover's paradise, but if you're someone who prefers indoor activities or doesn't enjoy the great outdoors as much, you might find your options limited. There are plenty of things to do, like visiting Museum of Arts and Culture or catching a great movie, but the city recreational scene is really heavily skewed towards those who love hiking, skiing, and other outdoor activities. So this can be a bit of a culture shock if you're coming from a larger city with a bustling art scene, big malls, lots of like great shopping, great food, things like that. I personally think we've got, we're doing pretty good in most of those things, but you'll need to be pretty proactive in finding things to do, especially during those long winter months. So there you go. That's the top seven worst things about living here in Spokane. If you're a local, leave a comment down below. What's your least favorite thing about the Spokane area? If you are thinking about moving here, let us know what you're potentially worried about. And I made this video right here about all the things to do for every personality type. So I'd suggest watching this one next. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you over here.